Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where on an absolutely foul weather day uh, here in the UK, I am going to be tackling a brand new Fog of War Sudoku. As you can see, um, this grid is covered in fog. And the puzzle is called Diaresis 2.0, and it's by Kenneth's dad. And there's a bit of a story behind this one. Um, Di Diaresis 1.0, the first version of this puzzle, was submitted to us a few weeks ago. And the testers had a look at it. And while well, one of the testers in particular fell in love with the puzzle and thought it was magnificent, but couldn't finish it, um, and ended up finding out that the puzzle had... Um, it had it had an issue. There was a couple of solutions, I think. And so um, wrote back to Kenneth's dad and said, is there an issue with the puzzle? And Kenneth's dad said, yes, there is, even though the puzzle had been at that point tested something like 20 times. And it goes to show that these puzzles, they are not simple. They are not simple. I know some of you get cross if occasionally Mark or I overlook some logic, but it is, you know, it's, it's actually possible that 20 people can look at a puzzle and not spot that the puzzle has two solutions, which is really amazing. Um, anyway, um, Kenneth's dad has now produced Diaresis 2.0. Diaresis is, is that funny vowel mark, isn't it? Um, I want to say naive. It's that double dot thing that goes over the second vowel. Um, I have no idea how that can possibly be re related to a Sudoku puzzle. Um, but I said, oh, I, I know what it'll be. Yeah, because there's going to be crop key dots underneath the fog. And maybe there'll be double, if there were double dots or something like that, um, it might look like a diuresis. Um, not sure. But anyway, the, uh, oh, and the other thing is, I don't know how hard this puzzle is. I did look, at, look it up on Logic Masters Germany before I turned the webcam on. And it had only got seven solves which is slightly terrifying because fog of war puzzles tend to be extremely popular. So I imagine a lot of people have tried this and perhaps not being a, been able to, to solve it. So it could be a tricky one. Um, Maverick is about to fly over. Even in even on this windy day, nothing stops Maverick flying to interrupt the videos. So apologies if you're about to hear any aeroplane noise. Um, let me just trot through a couple of things <laughs> before I read you the rules formally. Um, two things oh yes mark and i are streaming tomorrow night at 10 p.m uk time we are going to be trying to solve puzzles from our 600,000 subscriber pack so we were a few months ago we released the well we reached the somewhat unlikely total of 600,000 youtube subscribers and so we released a special pack of puzzles featuring some wonderful wonderful authors um and yeah, we're going to be solving those puzzles tomorrow night. Um, and we're each going to be solving the ones we haven't already tested. So um, we'd love to have your company. Um, I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen. Um, and we can all celebrate this, <laughs> this unlikely achievement together. And if you, if you haven't seen any of those puzzles yet and you want to try them, there's a link under the video. Just click on the link and you'll get the pack. It's a PDF and you can play all, the, all, all of the puzzles on your computers, obviously. Um, what else? What else? Well, tomorrow is the 1st of October, and that means it is also, not only is it streaming day, it is Patreon reward day. So if you're a patron of the channel over on Patreon, firstly, thank you very much for supporting us there. Secondly, you'll be able to download at 4 p.m. UK time Caroline's Halloween Adventure, which is a brand new Sudoku hunt from the Paint by Numbers Institute, featuring lots of Japanese sum Sudoku puzzles. You can see examples of those there. And these are the ones where you create a picture in the grid if you solve it correctly. So they're a lot of fun and it's very approachable um, this month. So do have a go at it. And we look forward to your feedback in due course. The competition will, chose, will, chose, will close uh, on the 20th of October. Um, and let's do some birthdays. Uh, birthdays, Alex. Alex, you've turned 16 today, and I know this because your girlfriend, I know, I think it, it might be pronounced. Is that a Finnish name? I hope, I hope I'm not totally butchering the pronunciation, but Alex, I hope you have a brilliant 16th birthday with lots of chocolate cake, of course. Um, next, we'll switch over to Colorado, and CJ, your partner Fox, wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout-out. Now, 
Mm, CJ, I cannot agree with the fact apparently you've had lemon meringue pie to celebrate. No, I, I don't get on with lemon meringue pie, but apparently Fox, who also doesn't like lemon meringue pie, had chocolate cherry dump cake. I mean, what's a dump cake? I've never heard of a dump cake, but anyway, that's what Fox had, and I, I'm, I'm much more on board with that one. But CJ, many happy returns. Next, Emily, it's your birthday today. And I know this because your boyfriends, Gustav and Andre, wrote to us uh, and said that they love you very much and I hope you have an absolutely brilliant day today. And thank you for watching the channel. And I hope you get chocolate cake, not, lem not lemon meringue pie. Um, and then over to Munich, where Julia, you've turned 32 today. And I know this because your husband, Holger, wrote to us. Munich, oh, that's a city I've not been to for years now. I used to, I'm a massive fan of Munich. It is such a brilliant city, sitting there very close to the Bavaria, Bavarian Alps. Um, yeah, it was, it was, um, it was one of the few places I used to enjoy going with work um, um, when my work was something far more prosaic. But anyway, now let's, let's also wish Liz a very happy birthday. Liz, you've turned a secret age today over there in Bristol. And I know this because your husband, Charlie, wrote to us. And apparently, Charlie also turned a secret age three days ago. So the two of you were born three days apart. And you've both turned, yeah, you've both turned 45. <laughs> and with Liz, your birthday actually being today. And uh, I, But I gather Charlie is going to make sure there is chocolate cake with lots of icing if he has anything to do with it. So Liz, I hope you have a great day. And Charlie, I hope you did have a great 45th birthday three days ago. And with all that said and done, let me try and get my thinking cap on and let's have a look at Diaresis 2.0 by Kenneth's dad. These are the rules of the puzzle. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row. Oh, hang on. Well, yes, hang on. Oh, there's something else I wanted to mention. Every row, every column and every three by three box. Um, the grid is mostly covered in fog. Placing a correct digit removes fog in the neighbouring and surrounding cells. So if we got this digit, it would clear the fog from all those squares. Now, that does lead to temptation for some people. Some people, therefore, sort of guess the numbers and reveal the fog. That's not how Kenneth's dad will have designed the puzzle. The idea will be that we have to look up here and work things out and gradually reveal the fog in a, in a, in a sort of designed way. Uh, now, a red X indicates a product square, a two by two region of cells where the product of the digits on the negative diagonal equals the products of the digits on the positive diagonal. So sometimes, um, uh, this is something actually I only learned from, as a result of the channel, some people refer to that line as a positive diagonal. And that's because if we plotted Y against X, it would have a positive gradient, whereas that line would have a negative gradient. So that would re be referred to as a negative diagonal. So what we're being told here, look, there's some uh, red emerging from the fog. Um, so is that saying that we've, we've sort of got an X underneath the fog there? And if I understand correctly, what we have to do is multiply those two digits together it's the product, isn't it? Product of the digits on the negative diagonal. So these two squares, imagine that they were, uh, what could we pick here that would have, let's say that was three and six. Three times six is 18. And then these two squares would have to multiply to give 18. So they could be two and nine. Um, and that could be a way of filling that red X and it would be quite funny if it was correct, but I doubt it will be. Now, what else? Uh, a blue X, there might be a blue X going, oh, let's, let's draw a blue X. Uh, so the blue X up there indicates a sum square. Oh, I see, so the red X is a product square. The, the blue X is a sum square and a two by two region of the cells where the, Sorry, so a, so a sum square is a two by two region of cells where the sum of the digits on the negative diagonal equals the sum of the digits on the positive diagonal. So this could work, um, I don't know, if this was 
I, actually, I don't want to put actual digits in here because uh, if that was 3 and 4, then this could be 1 and 6, and this would add up to 7, and this would add up to 7. Um, again, if that turns out to be correct, it is pure serendipity. Um, so that, that's how I think blue thingies work. Now, digits in cells separated by a white dot must be consecutive. So that one, these have to be consecutive numbers. So if this was a one, this would be, well, if that was a two, it's a better example. If that was a two, this is either then a one or a three in order to be consecutive with two. And no rule is subject to a negative constraint. Okay, so I think what that's saying is it would be perfectly fine. Um, you can see there's no white dot between these two squares, but these could be consecutive. There doesn't have to be a white dot between all consecutive digits. And let's say, um, let's say that these four squares were in that pattern where if this was two and this was nine and this was three and this was six, that's 18 and that's 18, but let, there doesn't have to be a red X between, between these squares, um, even though they obey that condition. I think that's what that's saying with the regards to the negative constraint. And they are all the rules. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. The only other thing I was going to mention, which I suddenly remembered I was meant to mention and I'd forgotten, is this puzzle from yesterday. That's Three in the Corner by James Cop. Lots of you have been absolutely loving this puzzle, so do have a look at it if you haven't had a chance to look at it already. It really is quite miraculous. Um, anyway, let's get back to this one. Um, now, maybe I could draw in my red. Yeah, actually, is that just going to be complicated? Maybe I don't do that. But you can see that there is a there's a red X there and there's a red X there. So these digits, these two digits are common. So whatever that digit is, let me just think about this. Whatever that digit is, I multiply it by that one and I get a number. And that will be the same as the product of those two but I multiply this digit by that one, and that will be the same as the product of those two. So this is common to both of those multiplications. Which is interesting. That makes me think so this times this is the same as that times that. And this times this is the same as that times that. I'm trying to understand. I feel like there is a... Re I feel... Well, there is, but I, don't, I can't understand immediately what it is. There's clearly a relationship of some sort between these two squares and those two squares. But I can't quite see what it is. Now, what about the... Let me just think about the someone as well. So we've got someone here, someone here, me. Um, but they, I mean, they could be anything almost. Providing this, providing those two squares don't have a unique total. For example, those two squares can't add up to 16 because they would have to then be seven and nine and there would be no way for the positive diagonal to add up to 16 because there is only one possible combination. It'd be the same if these added up to three, wouldn't it? They'd have to be one and two, and there wouldn't be any option for these two to also add up to three. So, but providing this is some, some of the myriad of modest totals where there is more than one combination to make the square add up, or to make the total add up, I have difficulty believing that that is where to start. So it must be to do with this, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to see if there's a relationship between that and that. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go, I'm just going to try and do the maths on this to understand it. So A, B, C, D, let's just say E, F. Now, we're told that A, B 
is equal to CD. And we're told that CF is equal to BE or EB if we prefer it. So C is equal to BE over F. So C, like I've got no way of showing that. But just looking at this equation, C is clearly equal to BE divided by F. So if I put that in there, if I substitute for C, I'm going to get AB is equal to BED over F. Now the, there's going to be B on let's there's going to be B on both sides of that. BED divided by F. So if I remove B from there and I remove B from there and then I put the F multiply through by F and put the F here, then what do I get? Then I get AF. Oh yeah, okay, so it's just so I get AF equals DE. So there's so that oh uh, is that obvious? Should I have just immediately understood that? So there's there's sort of a a stretched x so there's a there's a mini x between these two and a mini x between these two and then a stretched x between those two i could draw an x between af and ed and i would reach the same conclusion which so whatever i put So whatever I put in here, yeah, so the ratio, the ratio of this must be the same as the ratio of that, is what I think that's telling me. Yes, that is what, yeah, yes. Right, so what that, yes, okay, now I understand. Because what we're actually saying here, that in fact, I should have done this slight, well, no, maybe not I should have done it, but I could have done it slightly differently. So what the basic equation here that we're given with A, B, and C, D is actually saying, let's rearrange this equation slightly. So before we do any substitutions, this is the same as a over d equals c over b, isn't it? That's what this is saying. It's saying, uh, let's try and do it like this. It's saying that a divided by d is the same as c divided by b. But now let's look at this equation. Because I can, I can get a over d from this equation. a over d is equal to e over f. So I've got an A, I've got ace here. Oh, I've got ace there. Well, yeah, I mean, I've just rewritten this, but, but what, what we're effectively now mathematically proving is that this ratio A over D is the same as the ratio of C over B. It's the same as the ratio of E over F with six different Sudoku numbers. That's very difficult to do because what is that ratio? What is that ratio? I want to say it's got to be a half, but that might not be true. Let's, let's just delete that for a second. What else could it be? If it's if it is a half, each of these dominoes is equivalent to a black Kropke dot relationship. But we would, you wouldn't know which way up it was. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't know which is higher. But there would be, there would be three different black Kropke dot relationships. If it was a third, how could that work? 
this this could be if it was a third what this could be let's say this was the smallest this could be one and three couldn't it if, if we're saying that the ratio and then this yeah it doesn't work for a third it doesn't because this could be one and three this could be two and six and so far we're fine but then what would the next one be it would be three and nine but i've used three over here so i can't repeat the three so i have to go up to four and four times three is 12 and 12 is not a sudoku number so you can't do a third so i think it has to be a half the only thing would be whether it's a, it could possibly be which i don't think it can Ah, no, I've thought of another one, I think. What about if it, if it was a, a slightly unusual fraction? Like... No, actually, that didn't work. I thought two-thirds might work for a moment, but I don't think it does, actually. Two-thirds... Th two no, it doesn't, I don't think. Two-thirds, six over four, but then nine over six would require another six so that doesn't work cool. actually you have to be a bit careful with this um i mean i'm just going to think about other possible fractions <laughs> i don't think anything else is going to even actually i really don't think anything else is going to have a chance two-fifths of things are just nonsense no okay so what we've now discovered is that the ratio of this this and this they are all in a ratio of one to two with each other and effectively i can't do this but there's a black kropke dot between each of these numbers now that's very interesting because and no jokes about me at parties thank you very much <laughs> um how do we do that so oh in fact ah maybe we don't have to do it because 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 if we think about the range of Sudoku numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, let's think about the numbers that could be could possibly conceivably be involved in a 1 to 2 relationship. Now, if you've done a few Sudokus, you will know that you cannot put 5, 7, and 9 on a black Kropke dot in, in, into a 1 to 2 relationship with another Sudoku number. Because, um, let's try it, 5. Well, if we double five, we get 10. If we half five, we get two and a half. That neither of those are Sudoku digits. Seven, three and a half and 14, that doesn't work. Nine, four and a half and 18, it doesn't work. So what we're actually being told is that these squares are five, seven and nine. This square is even because of the white dot. Let's get rid of the, the funny thing now. And this square is four six or eight because it must be consecutive with five seven or nine and okay and right well one of these numbers is a one so that's going to go with two on on the on its black Kropke dot and then three and six are going to be paired off together and four and eight are going to be paired off together How on earth do we? <laughs> well, <what> does... <laughs> How on earth does that give us a digit? Uh, maybe it's this one. Um... This has got to be. These two are adding up to an odd number. So these two must add up to an odd number. So this is even. So that's two, four, six, or eight. Um, I am not understanding this actually. This digit is, it's got to be in a one to two relationship with this digit. 
and it's got to be a valid one to two relationship with this digit. So if this is four, what we can't do is write two underneath it because we know that the one is going with the two in one of these dominoes. So if this is four, this is eight. If this is eight, this is four. And if this is six, this is three. So we can't, I was wondering whether we could play some games with the even numbers perhaps. Um, have I gone mad here? How do we do this? I don't understand at all. <laughs> I don't understand at all. What is going on here? Okay, okay. I I can I can improve upon this digit a little bit, I think. Or can I? I feel like I think I've going I think I'm going mad. Now mathematics in my brain is breaking for my brain. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I do see. I, I can limit this. Yeah. Okay, so one more. Let's think about the blue relationship for a moment. We're told that these two digits add to the same as those two digits. But we know the difference between these two digits is one because of the white dot. These are consecutive. So that, that implies that the difference between these two digits must also be one. And therefore, I don't think this can be two. It just won't work. I mean, let's just try and prove that to ourselves. I mean, there are combinations that you might immediately think, oh, hang on, two and nine would work here. They would add up to 11. But then the, the point is this would be an eight then if this is nine. So this would need to be a three, which apparently it can't be. So you can't put two there. So this digit is also three, four or eight because it must have the same relationship to its sort of domino partner as this one had to its domino partner. And now, right, and now one is in one of those squares. Oh, in fact, this is a one, two pair. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I've got it. Wow, this is not, this is very difficult. It's taken me 27 minutes. I haven't even got a digit, um, but I have now. Right, so I am now going to claim that this digit, I know what it is. And if you can't see why, do pause the video and see if, see if you figure it out. Um, I wouldn't blame, I'm sure some of you have been shouting at me for ages, but I that was not straightforward at all. So the reason I think this one is a two is because one of these two is a six. And I know that the only digit that six can go with in a black Kropke dot relationship is three, which means one, of, we can see it, one of these is a three. And that means the ratio of one of these dominoes is six on top of three. In other words, the high digit, the heavy digit is on the top of the fraction. And that means that one of these digits needs to be an eight above a four because we need to we need the ratio of all these to be exactly equal. So the ratio of one of these two dominoes is two, basically. It's a six on top of a three. So there must be an eight on top of a four. So we can actually delete the eight from here. Sorry, uh, well, we can, yeah. And th this must, that means we can delete the four from here because one of these is going to be an eight on top of a four and this one must be a two on top of a one i think oh goodness me that was that's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant now what does that do and the answer is hmm, perhaps diddly squat is it I know. Does the ratio thing work the other? Uh, yeah, it must. Yes, it must work the other way round. <laughs> so that, isn't that strange that my brain couldn't immediately, could, just didn't immediately sort of get that by osmosis. But it, of course, 
you know a product relationship um <laughs> it, it what we also know is that these ratios must be constant mustn't they because what we know is that that multiplies to that so this multiplies to that and therefore we can do, we could have done that algebra in that dimension and we're going to find out that these are all this these are all in the same paradigm and the oh hang on oh no that's fine isn't it so if, if this was if this was two and this was six the ratio would be three three then this would be three and this would be one and then this would have to be in a one to three relationship with this being the smaller number so that would have to be would have to be three here and nine here i think But if this was eight, then we're in a four relationship. So this would be four and this would be one. Yeah, okay, I see. So it's it's that it's I think what we I think this is nine three, because I don't think anything else works. Um and, and that's because this is always the heavy digit vis-a-vis -vis this digit as regards that little rectangle. So this is always the heavy digit. So this is always the light digit, which means it's low. And you can see if we make this four, given that the ratio here is at least one to three, this is going to be a 12 at least. That's just not gonna work. This must be a three. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, so three can't be in a one to four relationship. So that should be a nine. This now is not nine. these relationships are one to three relationships from the proof that we've done here so this is six this is three this is eight this is four this oh no we don't get that um this is extremely interesting that is something i will tell you for nothing it's extremely interesting there's another of these uh, nonsense thingies here look attached to a blue thingy which is attached to a red thingy which is attached to a blue thingy so goodness only knows what that means but this one is independent look it doesn't overlap with this one at all so we can't do we can't do any maths on that one but ah okay but we do know by sudoku that four and eight occupy um they occupy two of the four squares on this x. Now they, no, they definitely, yeah, you definitely can't have the four and eight opposite one another because they would multiply to 32. And I can't think of another two Sudoku digits that could multiply to 32. So the four and the eight, so, so this is a two to one, yeah. That's beautiful. So because the four and the eight aren't opposite one another on this on this X, the, the four and the eight are either horizontal partners or ver they're either horizontal or vertical partners. So that means that this is a two to one relationship. And that means what's the other pair of digits in this X that must be in a two to one relationship? Well, it's not three and six. And it can't be four and two because we've already used the four to partner up with the eight. So it must be one and two. And now I've got a one, two pair here. This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. So this is one, two. This is four, eight. These squares are five, six, seven, I think. And that means that square is a nine, hopefully. Oh, didn't clear fog, but that's probably because it's already we've already cleared the fog around there we still don't know what this white dot digit is six seven um oh okay but i do know it because i can do the maths on it that must be a seven actually and that's a five that, that's because five, 6 and 9 add up to 15, so I need 8 and 7 to add up to 15 on the other one. So I can I can pencil mark the bottom digits. I've got 1, 2, 3 triple here. I've got a 4, 4, 5, 8 triple here. 
So I should have a six, seven, nine triple there, but we we don't know what's under the fog. So we're either going to be looking at this, or more likely, I think, probably these two squares next. Now, so we either are looking at the, okay, the all right, the difference between those two digits is four. So the difference between those two digits is also four, isn't it? But we don't know the direction of travel. We just know that that's true. So if the, what I'm thinking is, if this is four, eight, then in order to correct the count, we're adding eight to a number here. Let's say it was one. That would give us nine. So the four should be added to a five. So the difference needs to be, it needs to be preserved. And it's going to go in the same direction. So what does that mean? So if this is one, this would be five. five ah, that doesn't work. Ah, ah, yeah, okay. So maybe what we're meant to do, sorry, and the, the reason five doesn't work is I can't put five. I can't ever put five on one of these X's, can I? I'm just questioning myself there because does that, I don't think you can. Um, well, it is true you can't, but it's, it is more complicated. I, 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 because of the work we did up here, I was thinking that five, seven and nine couldn't go on red thingies. That's not right. Five and seven can't because they're, they're prime. But nine could go on one with a three. Nine and three are in a relationship, one to three relationship. And that could be paired off against a two and six, couldn't it? But OK, but you can't put. Oh, you definitely can't put five on here, so you can't put one on here. But you could put two and six into those squares. Ah, but th OK, you can put two and six on. That's fine. But you can't put three into either of those squares because the other digit will be a seven. And seven is also impossible as five is impossible. Because, I mean, the point is, if you, let, let's just do it up here, just in case you're doubting whether I'm speaking verily to you. But if you put five in, into one of these exits, we, we know that the ratio of this is the same as the ratio of that. So what ratio are we going to make work here? And yeah, the, the problem is that, that, that with five being prime, we, we have no ability <laughs> to uh, or let's think about it a different way let's look at actually at the negative diagonal way that might make it clearer if we do one and five these have to multiply to five without using one or five that's clearly not going to work and anything higher is going to have a factor of five um, required in one of these because we can't use ten in one of these digits and it's the same logic for seven so two and six works Three and seven won't work. Four and eight, don't tell me four and eight works. Why Why wouldn't four and eight work? Just the other way, well, yeah, just the other way up. So if this was eight, this was four, and that was eight, and that was, f hang on, if that's eight, and that's four, No, it doesn't work, does it? Four and eight. Why can't I see that? That's weird. That's that's freaking me out. My brain doesn't work with as regards that. It doesn't work. Even though I feel like it should. <laughs> I mean, so so what I'm saying is, let's do it with this one. If this is eight and this is four and they're on a, a blue x 
that's made me feel so stupid I cannot tell you but can you see that my gut reaction was oh well four and eight must work because obviously I can then make both diagonals add up to 12 but you can't because to do that you need the high digit on the same side of the x so this would have to be the eight and this would have to be the four and it doesn't work and again that's so counterintuitive to me but that's great that's great because it means I can get rid of that option ah but five and nine no five I can't put five on the x I could put nine on so then nothing else works so it is two six that is so strange okay no, I was going to say it can't be two six because the ratio is three and the ratio there isn't three. But that's a blue, that's a blue x. Okay, but if the ratio is two six here, oh, this could be one three or three nine. No, ah, <laughs> okay. That's really weird. That is really weird. So, is it this one? Is it something to do with the difference between these two? Is it that? It can't be this one, can it? I mean, what actually do we know about this one? I don't think it's very much. So let me think about this. So if this is one, this is two. We know that, yeah, we know the ratios within here are two to one, don't we? So if this is one, this is two, this is four, this is eight, this is two, this is six. And then, so that this has to be top, bottom heavy, doesn't it? If that's one, the, the, top, the high digits are always on the low, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's interesting. What I what I learned from my stupidity over here was that on the blue X, you always sort of have the, it goes the same way. So the, the high digit is always on the same side, if you like. So, so, so the low digit is on the same side as the low digit on the other side of the X. What I mean is, let's imagine this square was a four then I know that this ought to be the two side of the X, the low digit of, of the two possibilities, because if it was the high, we'd be adding the two highs on the diagonal to get to the two lows, which doesn't work. So if this is one, yeah, it works the same way. This is going to be the low digit on the red X. So one, four, two, this has to be low and it can't be one. So this would be three. So, so there'd be a one, two, three, four quadruple here. And this would be, yeah, I see. Yes, what this is important because what it means is you can't put one on here, I don't think. So let's just go through that again. If this is one, then this is four. This is two. This should be the low side. You might say, well, it could be one. It can't be one. I made this one to start this sequence off. So this has to be three. And this is a one, four, two, three triple. And these digits would be two, eight, six, nine. And obviously, if I started with this being the one, this would be one, one, four, two, three. And this would be the hide option in each case, two, eight, six, nine. So there is no one on this dot. And one of these strings of digits is a one is 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 the digits one, two, three, four. Uh, 
OK. So perhaps it's this X then, is it? Because now... We know that these digits are either a 2-3 pair, which have a difference of 1. So these would have a difference of 1. With this being the lower. This is always the lower. Or this is a 6-9 pair, which has a difference of 3. These would, these, would be, these would be within the same entropy bands. So this would be like a 1-4, or a 4-7, or a... Or a five eight or something. Oh, maybe it's maybe it's Sudoku on that one. That digit is quite constrained. Actually, that digit is quite constrained because it can't be 5 or 7 from the work we did earlier. So that digit is 1. It's not 2 or 3 by Sudoku. 4. It's not 5. It's not 6. It can't be 7. It can't be 8. It can't be 9. 1 or 4. Right. That's the digit that's under the pressure. So that's 1 or 4. This one. Yeah, well, let's look at this one, because at least that's going to give us some idea of the ratio between these two, isn't it? But I think this has got a lot of options, unfortunately. It, can't, it could be 1. This time it could be 3. It could be 4. It can't be 5. It can't be 6. It can't be 7. 8. Can it be 9? Maybe. No. Ah, okay. Here is, a, here is a totally valid point. It can't be 9, can it? Because if it's 9, what is, what is the ratio between these two digits, which must be pre preserved, don't forget, in these two digits? Well, if this is 9 and this is 1, I mean, this could be 2 and 18. That's not going to work, is it? If it's 9 and 4, that's still impossible. I mean, it would be 8 and 18. That doesn't work either. There's no way there's another 4-9 ratio with Sudoku digits. So this cannot be 9 by ratio logic. So if, if this isn't 3, this is 1 and 4 and the ratio is 4 to 1. And that would be, that would have to be 2 and 8, which might work. <laughs> um, oh, in fact, if that was 2 8, we'd even know the order. Oh, God, you know all sorts of things. Why? Okay, so can this be a 3? If this. Oh, it can, I think. If this is 3. Well, if this is 3 and this is 1, the, rela the relation. Oh, no, no, hang on. No, I don't like. Th I don't like 3 with 1 anyway. If this is. Let's do, let's do this slowly. If that's 3 and that's 1, the, ra the ratio here, this is 3 times this digit. So this is 3 times this digit. Well, how's that working? We can't put 2 and 6 in here because of this. And we can't use 3 and 9. There's nothing work. That does not work. So if this is 3, this is 4. And, the and then this would be... And it can't be 6. I was going to say 6 and 8, which works sudoku -ly, but it doesn't work sudoku in the column in the column. So that doesn't work either. So the, oh, this is beautiful. This is so clever because now this can't be 3. This is 1, 4. But now the, re the relationship between these two digits is a 4 to 1 relationship. So the, they have to be 2 and 8. But this can't be 2. So that must be 8. That must be 2. Now the ordering must be preserved here. So this is 4 times this digit. So this is the 4. This is the 1. Oh, wait a moment. So what's going on here? So now we've got, <laughs> so now we've got duplication. We've got duplication. Duplication? What's that? You've got duplication of this thing here. These are all in two to one relationships. So it's the same as what we were looking at here. So it must be six on top of three. These squares have got to be five, seven, nine. We've got roping in. These are five, seven, nine now. These have got to be one, three, four. And these have got to be 
two, six, eight. We've got thingies going on here on this domino. Um, thingies being a technical term. Let me just think about this for a second. Well, hmm. the 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 difference between any of these digits is even, isn't it? So the most extreme difference we could construct would be a difference of four between these two digits. So it's either a difference of four or a difference of two. And these have the same parity, is what I'm detecting. But yeah, we might have to think quite hard about this, actually. So it feels like this is the digit that's under the pressure because it's subject to, you know, this X and that X. But I really, I would really love to know. Is there some way that I'm meant to understand which way round these go or something? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, sorry, if this is, I suppose that's not nine, is it? Um, hmm. <laughs> okay. So the difference here is either two or four. But there's no restriction regarding, you know, digits like five here, is there? I mean, if it's OK, let's think about this. So if it's. If it's two. These have to have the same parity. Yeah, the parity couldn't be even, could it actually? because two and six have gone, so the only digits available are four and eight. I, be I bet these are gonna be four and eight. That's what I think. I think four, eight with five, nine here is, my, is where my gut is taking me, but that's not logical. Um, I'm trying to see if there's some obvious way of doing this, and I'm just failing, aren't I? So these would have to be OK, so if this is a difference of two and this is a difference of two, these are both odd digits and they don't involve three or nine. So they would be five and seven. That's that is quite interesting. But if um, so, they would have to be five and seven. What other digits am I left with in this box then? One, four, eight. That, oh, this would be a one. Hang on, that doesn't work at all. Parity doesn't work. This would be a four eight pair. And this would be a one. And the sum of these is even. And the sum of those is odd. So that's, oh, I see, is it parity then? Oh, it is. Oh, goodness. Oh, I've, I've just, I've, I've finally, the light has dawned. This is nothing to do with thinking of, oh, goodness me, this is so beautiful. Right, this is the key for cell. That is odd. That's all we need to know in a way. It's odd. So, once it's odd, what is the sum of these two digits? An odd and an odd is an even. So this is always an even number. And it's not two or six. So it is four or eight. And once it's four or eight, because the parity different, because we know these are of the same parity, these are of the same parity, they have to have the same difference. So this has to be four and eight. And this has to be five and nine. And I know the order because this, this can't be nine. 
if this is right, this is just absolutely brilliant. Five, look, it's right, it's right. Five and nine, we have to keep the relationship the same, so it's that order. This is a seven. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that took me a bit of time to figure out, but I am pleased I did, because that is, that is such a more beautiful way of seeing the point. Um, one, five, seven. So, let's actually label these up. One, five, seven. That is not seven. So we should be able to do something here in a moment or two, shouldn't we? Uh, you can't do four and two. That would add up to six. And I can't make those two add up to six, however much I might like to. So this is going to be a six. That's going to be a two. Oh, well, this is huge. This is huge because now, now, look at that that collection we know we knew one side was the one two three four collection didn't we so we can now we could just write this in <laughs> um by mathematics that's a one this is a five seven pair this is not a six there's a five seven pair in that row so these squares are one three four oh Oh, I see. I hadn't got this one, had I? This one here. I was just thinking, I'm, I've only got Sudoku now, which was a terrifying thought. But I think, um, I think, I think we have got this, this X here, which will hopefully y y yield some secrets for us. Right. So how do we yield the secrets from this thing? Five can't be on it. Oh, see, it's that simple. You can't put five on an X. <laughs> let's use let's use the principle we've already established. So this is four eight, which is in a ratio of one to two. So this can't involve three. And that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. That's become a nine by Sudoku, naked single. Um, and that three in the corner is in exactly the same place as yesterday's puzzle. This is not nine. We've we've revealed a new a new little thing here, look. A new blue X this time. Um Right, and the difference between these numbers is not great. So the difference between these numbers is not great. So what yeah, okay. So this is not a one four pair because the difference between these would be three and I cannot achieve the same difference there and therefore equalize across the X so there is a two in one of those squares that is not a two and that is beautiful that's another beautiful step because remember what we've learned you always have the same size digits on one side of the X's so if I pick, if these were both the low digits, so if this was one, two on top of four, eight, yeah, it would work mathematically for this, but that would be one, four, and that would be one, four, and that wouldn't work sudoku -ly. Um Let me just show you that because I'm not going to disturb the fog by, by doing that. So if we put the, if we make the, the, the ratio one half like that, you can see it breaks this square. So we can't do that, we've got to do the opposite. It's top heavy is where we're looking. So this isn't four. Oh, that, that is a two. In fact, it's just got a one four looking at it. Sorry, I didn't see that. Um, oh, I see. We've got. OK, so we've got another X here. So we're in a two to one ratio here, aren't we? So this is two to one. But which way up are you? If it's two on top of one, this is a heavy digit. So that could be eight on top of four or six. No, it can't be six on top of three. That will clash. So let me think this through carefully. Six, sorry, two on top of one. Eight, four works. Six, three doesn't work. Four, two doesn't work. So I think there's only one option if this is two on top of one. But if this is two on top of four, then it can't be one, two, or four here, but it could be three with a six underneath it. And it, oh, it couldn't be four, eight, actually. That wouldn't work either. 
So that's that's bad, isn't it? That hasn't done it. There are two ways at least of that working. Oh dear, and don't tell me I've not got any more. I've not got any more <laughs> clues to use. <laughs> no. Oh dear. So there must be more I can do down here somehow. Let me think. Okay. Ah, okay. Eight is on here. So that's probably going to be useful, isn't it? And we know that the ratio... Oh yeah, that is useful. That is, that's exactly, it's, it's the same point again. <laughs> okay, let's look at this congregation of digits. Now remember, if we decide we want to put um, the high digits on the top, yeah? Then this would be an eight, obviously, because one of these is an eight. So if we're putting the high digits on the top, this is the eight. And we'd have to go eight, two, eight. That would be forced. Because this is only three, 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 six when the six is on the bottom. So this has to be the eight, I think. I mean, let's just rigorously prove that to ourselves. If this is eight, what number do we put in here? Well, n nothing's going to work. We could make this nine. We could make this two, seven. So we're going eight, seven, two, one. But this is now a ratio of two on top of one. So that's another eight. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't. So what we've got to do is put the eight here. And therefore we're looking for 10, aren't we? So this is going to be four. This is going to be six. This is seven. And the ratio is a half. So we're looking at three on top of six. And everything seems to work, which is exactly what we would hope for. Three and five get resolved here. 6 goes here, 7 goes here, 9 goes here, and are we cooking with gas? Nearly. Um, 7 and 8 go here, 1 and 2 go there, things go here. Oh, this is a 1. <laughs> I can get that digit. Uh, this is 4, 5, and 9. So we've got some more. Okay. Oh, lovely. Look, this is a 9. Because look, we just have to keep obeying the rules of arithmetic. There's a difference of one there, so there's a difference of one there. Nine can't be involved. Um, so this isn't nine. Or that's not three. That's not three. We've got... Oh. Oh, it's beautiful again. Look, it's the same thing again. This is a superb puzzle. Kenneth's dad. Wow. Okay. The difference between these is one. The difference between these is one. The difference between these is one. Don't know what they are yet. But the difference between those has to be one as well. Because there's another X, blue X, looming out of the fog. So we must go. We can put that. We can put that. This has got to be odd. Maybe that's where we look next. Let me just think about this for a second. That digit is not six. So is it two, five, seven, eight in this column? Maybe that's two, five or seven. That's five, seven or eight bobbins. Okay, maybe it is this then. Um, a consecutive pair of digits must include an odd number and an even number. And this is most certainly even. So this is most certainly odd and it's not. Oh, this isn't two because this would need to be one or three. That's not two. So it's five, oh, it's five or seven. But it's not, okay. It's five or seven, but is that actually helpful? <laughs> um, oh dear, I don't know. I don't know that it is at all. It's going to be something like, these are all going to go in the same direction, aren't they, again? So we, we're going to be going something like 7, 4, 3, or 7, 4, 3 in that direction. Oh, I'm not sure, actually. 7, 5, 7. 
Oh, no, it's much easier. Oh, goodness, I was thinking, how am I going to do this? But I have spotted it. Where's 9 in row 6? The answer is, I'm not sure, but it's definitely in one of those squares where we know its relationship with its other digit is 1. So that's 9 and 8. And now that should help, surely. That's 5, 7, so that becomes 6. Got lots of... Oh, I've got a 5, 7 pair here. So that's got to be a 2. Yeah, that's 8. Oh, that's good. That's going to do it. 2... Two, one, one. That's that's another three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Oh my goodness me! This is so brilliant, actually. Oh, that digit's a six by Sudoku. Um, and now we can just we can preserve ordering, can't we? If this is the heavy digit, this is also the heavy digit. So we can do this, that still works, it preserves everything, everything, mathematics is working. Oh, oh I was thinking, how am I going to do this? But it is done by Sudoku. That is how to solve the puzzle, I think. That is an absolute world beater. Oh, what does that say? Podjwani Kropki. I don't know what that means. Uh, is that Polish? I am not sure. Um, but let's just see. Why is it called diuresis 2.0? It should be to do with dots, I think. Uh, we've only got we've got two dots in the grid, but they don't look like much like a diuresis symbol to me. I'm not sure. That is that is a startlingly brilliant puzzle, actually. Very original extremely interesting sort of numerically um i thought anyway let me know in the comments how you got on with it i've just tripped over an hour i'm not that disappointed i didn't find i found the break-in very difficult just to get a digit in this box was was really hard um but anyway it was that was a complete joy that is 67 minutes of absolute joy i've just been given by kenneth's dad so kenneth's dad thank you very much let me know in the comments how you got on i enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic